Are you scared? Everyone's scared of sticks, which is, of course, drastically different than being scared of sticks. But, you know, honestly, even though phobias are very, very real and everybody is scared of something, some are scared of the dark. Some are scared of bugs crawling up their nose during their sleep. It happens. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. But when it comes to sticks, honestly, why be scared of sticks? So many usages for these objects in various forms. Whether they're in your house, whether they're out in the goddamn backyard, whether you're out in the deep, deep woods, totally goddamn lost... Gather up a bunch of goddamn sticks and burn them. Just keep burning them and burning them and burning them. And maybe if you're lucky, the rescue crew will get you before the final embers go out. And then you freeze. You don't want to freeze, so just keep burning more and more sticks. Or if you have friends and you need to put them in the backyard to just have a whole bunch of fun, just gather up a whole bunch of sticks and just burn them in a goddamn pile. And keep burning them and burning them. And don't worry. The sticks will never revolt. There's no goddamn reason to ever be fearful of any sticks. They will never come after you. Why would you worry about sticks being around you? If you don't show fear, don't worry. The sticks can't get you. They can't get you. They absolutely can't get you. How did you get here? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you. You have to show the stick that you are the dominant stick. You have to dominate the stick and make sure you keep dominating the stick. And eventually, you will become the biggest stick of all. Somewhere in Queens was written, directed, and starring Ray Romano. I imagine he also made the coffee and probably ran and got sandwiches because he had his hands in all kinds of pies. Just Ray Romano getting his fingers in all kinds of pies. You're welcome for that imagery. Yes, from Everybody Loves Raymond, I know. Ray Romano from Everybody Loves Raymond. Nobody had heard of that show. Does anybody remember that show? Because I know my audience skewers old, but <clears throat> I'm not sure how many people remember that show. Because it's been a while. This is also written by Mark uh, Stiegman, who um, did television like Scrubs. Uh, the one the TLC, I believe, sung about. Wait, that's no Scrubs. So they couldn't wear Scrubs. And if they didn't wear Scrubs, then TLC wouldn't acknowledge them. I see the vision now. And also, he's produced various television shows. So yes, it stars Ray Romano, um, Laurie Metcalf, uh, Jackie from Roseanne, also the killer from Scream 2. Sorry, the movie's been out for numerous goddamn years. Jennifer Esposito, I would, absolutely goddamn would, and you would too. She is 50 and looks incredible. She looks almost the same as she did back when I still know what you did last summer came out. 25 fucking years ago. <laughs> it's fucking mind-blowing. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She's hilarious. And various other people as well. Want to give a shout to Jacob Ward, who plays um, Angela, Laurie Metcalf's character, and Leo, Ray Romano's character. <laughs> the son sticks because he has long legs. And that's pretty much it. And this film takes place in it takes place in a location that I couldn't figure out, and I I was I was perusing I perused this goddamn atlas. This is what I'm doing. This is the lengths I go to to try and research this stuff because you think that it would be pretty obvious what I'm actually supposed to do. But let me just take a look at this: managing the plants, future Northern Europe, the British Isles, the Central Europe, and not here, um, Spain, Portugal. And then we're at Italy. Okay, Italy. No, it's not somewhere there. It's not somewhere in southeastern Europe. I got it. I got Okay, you know what? It's in Nicaragua. No, wait. I can't say that word right there, but it, it's... Let's see. China, let's see. Nether, Netherlands? Okay, I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. God. New York, but I, just, I can't find it. I can't find it. Let me consult my notes at Queens. Queens. It's in Queens. It's right there in the title. Aha, Ray Romano. You sly old dog, you got me. You got me. Okay, in case you're wondering why I'm just basically doing bits here and having sticks in the background and everything and just generally trying to have fun, it's because basically if you just take the concept, a, a pseudo, you know, version of Everybody Loves Raymond and you kind of just put a few episodes together and add a little more basketball talk, that's kind of what you have here. Ray Romano actually does a pretty good job directing and writing this because it's about Italian-American families. Well, specifically one Italian-American family, his. And my God, can you tell that everybody, not, they're not necessarily caricatures, but yeah, are they a little animated, bippity-boppity? Sure, they are. But basically, it centers around Leo and Angela and their son, uh, Sticks, 
He's very good at basketball, but he has other things that he'd like to do. He meets a girl um, played by Sadie Stanley, who I have to say actually shows some pretty good acting chops here. And it's a whirlwind romance that they didn't know about, and then suddenly it's a breakup. And he's Styx is despondent. And Leo tries to do what he can to basically help his son continue to succeed and possibly get into college and go on, go past their traditional life because Leo's working in the family business, working for his dad, doing construction, that kind of stuff. There's Jennifer Esposito as a woman that recently lost her husband that flirts with Ray Romano. It would be very hard to resist Jennifer Esposito. Boy, howdy. But it, you know, it, it's basically about just family and it's a comedy drama, drama comedy, with some pretty good writing. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, and this is not necessarily something that is going to set the world on fire. For example, this movie has been out for a couple days, and I went and saw a screening of it right after I was off work. I was the only one there. And this town tends to actually skewer older. So generally, you would think there would be a few people in there, even on a Saturday afternoon. This also isn't a movie that probably should have been released in theaters. I mean, I'm not against actors getting paid well and them giving it a chance, but this is something that could have gone right to streaming. As far as, you know, it, it deals with like how, how far will a father go for his son without fully understanding his son and the relationship stuff. Really does it kind of hit home for me because I remember some relationships ending badly. Some by my, you know, by my hand and others by somebody else's hand holding the girlfriend's hand. I want to hold your hand. Anyway, so the whole point is, is that it's about family. It's about accepting people for who they are. And it ends up actually being something pretty good overall. I'm not going to say it's great. There's some pretty good dialogue in it. <laughs> Stuff that you really, you know, that you would need to witness to, yeah, because L Lori Metcalf's great. She's great as an Italian wife and who has her, who has some stuff that she wants to say and she says a little bit later on. And Leo kind of can't see the forest through the trees, kind of can't see, you can't push people to do something that they don't want to do, or maybe their heart isn't totally in, even if they're really, really good at it. And again, Jacob Ward actually does a really good job in this first major role. Um, he's not given a ton to do, but he does the most with it. And when he is called upon to do some emotional, you know, emotional stuff, especially with uh, Danny, Sadie Stanley, uh, that works pretty well. In fact, I would say their dynamic actually works pretty good. I mean, don't get me wrong, Laurie Metcalf and Ray Romano work pretty well together, but it's almost, it, it's about understanding where the future may go for somebody even if it's not the future that you think they should have it's a future they want and well no not reinventing the wheel and being it i'm not gonna say it's necessarily funny there are a few moments i laughed but it's not like a laugh out loud movie at least not to me the drama i think hits a little bit more home but you need that comedy to basically Get it going. The family aspect of it works, kind of like in Blue Bloods, except in Blue Bloods it works a little better. Also, it's a lot shorter. Jennifer Esposito is also in Blue Bloods. Yes, maybe I will, you know, confess my love for Jennifer Esposito one day. Shut up. But the whole point is it is rather effective, and it actually ends up being something pretty good overall. Now, check it out in theaters if you want, but this is a movie you could wait for on streaming. I mean, if this isn't on streaming within three weeks of me posting this review, I will be amazed just because of the fact... <laughs> I know it's only one screening, and it's only one theater. It's only, you know, one particular town, but my God, I mean, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily going to work. And again, the sticks, the sticks, you need to be scared of the sticks. But if you show too much fear, they're going to get you. So anyway, check it out in theaters if you want, or wait for streaming. This is going to be the spoiler part. Three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay, um, Angela, Lori Metcalf's character... <laughs> had cancer. She's afraid it uh, has come back. She's upset at <coughs> that aspect. And also the fact that Leo <coughs> is, Leo has gotten a lot of cheers at these games because they recognize that he's a local celebrity. They recognize that he, you know, that that's his son. <coughs> he gets 
rooted for. And that's shown in the very beginning, you know, with the first game. And the nice part of it is when Jacob Ward confesses his love to Danny and will even read her poetry, she's not as receptive to it. Their whirlwind romance ends in a breakup pretty goddamn quickly um, because she wants to travel the world. If he's going to go to college, she doesn't want to tie him down. Also, she wants to date other people. She's a girl just out of high school. Some people find their high school sweetheart. Some people don't. It, it just That's what happened with Angela and Leo. And, you know, Ray Romano wants his son to succeed, so it's kind of pushing for him to go to college and not be in the family business and do all this stuff. But the son has other ideas. He's good at basketball, but his heart isn't in it. He was trying to live his dad's dream <clears throat> instead of living his own, even though he is a pretty good athlete and almost won this one particular game that led them to some kind of state playoffs or whatever. They aren't exactly specific. And from there, basically during the breakup, what ends up happening is Ray Romano tells Danny, oh, you're trying to travel the country. Your dad, you know, at this dinner or at this family dinner, Danny uh, said that her parents wanted her to go to I an Ivy League school just for them, not for her. She wants to travel the country, but she needs a car. That's why she's working at a diner. Ray Romano offers basically pay for a car for her. Or give her a car, or just basically stay with my son so his heart will be in it, and he'll be able to do this. Well, the son isn't aware of this until, let's just say things go really, really tits up, and it gets really, really disturbing um, just seeing the heartbreak on Jacob Ward's face. He does a really, really good job conveying that, <clears throat> and there's a pretty good emotional scene with uh, Laurie Metcalf and one of the family <laughs> talking and then seeing, you know, and being, a, you know, not getting a phone call basically uh, from Leo. Hey, I, I, I'm i doing this so his heart will be in so he won't be sad. And that's basically it. And then she has to basically watch her flirting with this other guy. It's not that she doesn't like sticks, but she wants to see other people. She doesn't want to be tied down. Some people don't want to be tied down right away. That's okay. You need to live your life. And that's what ends up basically becoming the whole point of the movie. There's a big old blow up at a family function, a 50th anniversary for uh, Leo's parents. And it was somebody. I mean, the, it's a big old Italian gathering. And the Italian motif actually is pretty well done. And um, Leo's drunk. Him and Angela kind of have it out. You know, there's this big old confession. He basically says that he tried, he wanted Danny to be there so Sticks wouldn't be sad. And Sticks felt very, very hurt because he had read poetry to this girl. They'd had sex in the back seat of his car. And he thought maybe she had made a mistake. But, oh, it's just because you wanted this to happen and everything. So that leads to a bit of a moment where um, Leo ends up in Jennifer Esposito's bedroom. Oh, boy, howdy, how lucky. And he can't sleep with her. He can't do that stuff because he did have a heart-to-heart -heart with his wife earlier about the cancer ain't, ain't going to come back. And you know what? If it does, you're going to be it again because you're the strongest woman I know and this kind of stuff. And then he ends up in one funny moment uh, crashing on the front lawn because he forgot his keys because he got in a fight with one family member and his uh, keys were ripped uh, out because his jacket got ripped apart. And then he has to apologize to his son and realize, hey, I was wrong. This was my mistake. I did not I did not mean to hurt you. And then um, they kind of come together. Um, and a little bit later, he uh, Styx talks to Danny. That's where we get the whole thing. It's like everyone's scared. Styx, sorry, I'll stop with the props, I swear. And then he realizes... You know, you help, it, we won't be together, that's fine. You did help me realize I'm going to forge my own path. I'm not going to go to the college because my heart really isn't in it, even though I'm good at it. And then he invites his parents to a poetry slam, and he reads poetry. And there's he's, he's having a blast. He's like, you know, reading a really good emotional poet or poem. And then this one girl that clearly likes him from the group's like, yeah, go or whatever. Yeah, you know, sticks. 
And then uh, Laurie Metcalf's character says, who's this? Who? I'm not going to actually say the word. It rhymes with or. But that was kind of funny to end on. Now, it's not, it's endearing enough. It's well done as far as a crafted story, even though it's a basic story. It could have easily been a short series. I mean, I don't think this really would have been a miss if it had just gone to streaming. It gets a B as far as the good stuff about it. But is it something that's going to set the world on fire? No. Enjoy the props, folks. Sticks. Ha ha. Don't be scared of the sticks. Don't scare me. Don't look at me like that. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.